Good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to the What's New in OpenShift 4.13 Developer Tools Edition. Um, today we do have Brad Parag, Rob, Stefan, Mohit, Kasturi, Serena, and myself, Marcus, talking you through um, the latest editions um, that are exciting and coming up for OpenShift 4.13. So thank you so much for watching. And as usual, this is a recording. If you have anything that you want us to know, please feel free to comment in the video or reach out to us. Contact information will be at the very end of this video. Um, enjoy, take it away. In developer tools, our mission is to help developers improve their productivity, agility, and the security with which they can deliver applications as quickly as possible to meet the business needs. In 2023, we are going to focus on three key areas. Onboarding, to help developers get going with the solution stack of the companies as quickly as possible. Local development, so that the, the agility can be increased and they can go from experimentation to quick, uh, rapid feedback loops and uh, working with the, you know, the, the end deployment targets directly from the local development environments. And lastly, with cloud hosted services, uh, delivering cloud hosted services that help with the end-to-end -end delivery of the application securely and also integration with cloud hosted services uh, you know, uh, from other areas of our portfolio. So in the few, next few slides, we're gonna share about the progress we have made and our plans uh, and what's new with uh, you know, OpenShift 4.13 in these areas. Hi, everybody. Let's talk about OpenShift Airspaces and what's new in the product since 4.12. Devspaces has run quite a lot um, and we progressed really well uh, since we spoke last. And we have been working with our customers and developing a roadmap. And to that end, Devspaces intends to make its product simpler, faster, and as cloud native in every release as possible. To that end, here are some major and noteworthy enhancements since 4.1.12 release. We will support 4.13 in one of our future releases. Customers have been asking us um, to make a pre-release version, a beta version, so they could kind of test it um, before they use it on production. And we have made that possible. And now their spaces allows installation of pre-release versions or beta version for testing purpose only. VS Code is now the default editor. We have faded Eclipse there as an editor and are working to get production-ready support for IntelliJ. Customers can also now do a Podman build from within the containers. This has been one of our key asks from most of the customer and it, we made it possible um, in our one of the releases. We also have support for Workload Identity Federation. We also have added support for Azure DevOps Git servers in addition to our existing GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. There are much more smaller enhancements in the product and the details of which is available in the release notes of every version, the, whose links are provided um, in, in the same deck. You can also refer to our documentation for additional details. Thank you for listening in. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to what's new in OpenShift 4.13 developer edition and around ID extensions and Odo CLI tool. I am Mohit Suman. I work as a senior product manager, uh, working at Red Hat, catering to the developer experience around offerings for multiple ID extensions for Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ, and Eclipse tooling. So let's get started. What we have uh, new for the OpenShift four dot thirteen. Uh, the first one is we have uh, OpenShift Toolkit, uh, which is an ID extension for Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ. Uh, looking around creating, debugging, and deploying applications directly on top of OpenShift. So this is the go-to extension if you want to work with any application development catering to OpenShift or any Kubernetes cluster running on hybrid cloud, like OpenShift on AWS, OpenShift on Azure, or even OpenShift running locally on a laptop. Uh, the support for OpenShift Toolkit is provided for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, which is specific to uh, any ARM support for Mac, Intel-based also. The extension is available for Visual Studio Code Marketplace, uh, JetBrains Marketplace for IntelliJ, and even on OpenVSX registries, so that users can also install the OpenShift extension on their running dev spaces. 
Uh, with respect to application development, there are multiple features what we have added for the release and what's new. So one of the important factors what we have added is now users can browse and also install Helm charts on their clusters directly from the ID. So they don't have to leave their ID to browse and install Helm charts. Everything can be done directly from the OpenShift Toolkit extension. The other important aspect what we have improved is whatever workspace you have already in your VS Code instance and you want to deploy that application on top of a connected OpenShift cluster. So the extension will automatically detect what type of application it is, and it will also recommend you based on that detection, what type of configuration files are needed, basically what type of dev file is needed. So let's say you have a .NET application opened up in a workspace and you want to deploy that .NET application, the extension will automatically detect it and will recommend you that specific dev file. Users will have a choice to use the recommended dev file or even provide their own dev file if they already have a specific dev file which they were working in the past. One new feature which we have added on the OpenShift Toolkit side is right now users can work with application development, deployment, and even debugging on top of any cube or the OpenShift cluster. But now you can also do the same workflow directly on a running Podman instance. So let's say you want to deploy or debug an application on a container based workflow uh, on top of Podman. So you can do the same through the OpenShift Toolkit. So it now supports Podman also. Under the hood, OpenShift Toolkit uses Odo CLI. So we have the support of the latest Odo CLI, which is 3.9.0. Uh, with respect to what type of clusters users can provision from the IDE itself, so we have made an attempt for the users who do not have uh, access to a dedicated OpenShift cluster. They can provision an OpenShift cluster directly from your ID without leaving your ID. That can be done in multiple ways. You can also provision OpenShift running locally using OpenShift local or you can provision a developer sandbox instance, which is valid for 30 days free of cost directly from your ID. Uh, in the multiple releases, what we have done in this quarter, we have improved the support of developer sandbox. So now users will need very few clicks and they will quickly bootstrap their developer sandbox running. One of the important improvements right now, what we have done based on the multiple requests coming from the community and even from customers to run the OpenShift toolkit in a disconnected environment, so now you can run this extension in a disconnected environment and leverage all the features what we have with respect to debugging your application or even deploying your application on top of the connected OpenShift cluster. Let's move on to the different set of ID extensions. What we have, uh, we have multiple ID extensions catering to multiple products from Red Hat. Uh, one of them is OpenShift Toolkit. As I discussed, the multiple releases what we have done, the latest one is 1.3.0. And we have an improved workflow for provisioning a developer sandbox cluster. Even support of Helm chat is uh, intuitive to the developer experience, and support of Podman is provided in built to the extension right now. The other extension, what we currently have improved and added multiple support, is the server connector extension. So, this extension basically allows users to work with their middleware runtimes. It has support of Wildfly 24, it has the latest support of EAP 8. And it's also available on open VSX registry. So for uh, users or customers who want to work with middleware runtimes on top of dev spaces, they can also install the server connector extension directly from the open VSX registries and all the workflows will be supported there. Coming to the other extension, what we have is catering to the Kubernetes extension on IntelliJ. Uh, we have received multiple feedbacks and multiple requests based on the workflow of how Kubernetes extension should behave on IntelliJ. As you, this extension is also a dependency for running OpenShift extension, running Knative extension, and Tecton extension. So we have added multiple features like the support of cube config file from any location, just not the default one. It also supports multi-resource files. And we have also improved the error management with the Kubernetes extension. So now users can inspect uh, the details of the connection errors and other workflows. Coming to the serverless extension, uh, we have the Knative extension, which is available on for VS Code and IntelliJ. Uh, the important improvements what we have done is we have improved the support of uh, building and running or deploying your functions directly from your ID. So now the view of the serverless function will give you what state the function is currently running. Is it running in the build state? Is it running in a uh, run state or is it in a deployment state? And it will also give you multiple uh, error management workflow that okay, at what stage that uh, function has failed. And it will allow you to create multiple functions together. 
It supports S2 I builder images right now, and it also supports on build clusters. So everything with respect to uh, serverless functions can be directly done from your VS Code and IntelliJ ID. So you as a user will never have to leave that ID, and you can work everything seamlessly from your serverless functions. Let's move on to what we have with respect to ID extensions for specific languages like Java, Quarkus, YAML. VS Code Java stands out as the number one downloaded extension supported by Red Hat. We have approximately 24 million installs uh, with respect to the latest version what we released uh, last week with 1.18.0. We have done multiple bugs, uh, fixes, multiple enhancements. Some, the prominent one are it now provides Java 20 support with Visual Studio Code Java extension. It has an improved long box support and also the Gradle annotation processing is there. Multiple code completion and document refactoring are added into that extension. And coming to the Quarkus extension, uh, the latest uh, release is 1.13.0. Uh, one of the major improvements what we did for Quarkus uh, for this release is we now support Quarkus 3 out of the box. The last one is VS Code YAML. Uh, YAML is an extension which uh, is a dependency for uh, the OpenShift extension, the Kubernetes extension, for the Tecton extension, and the Function extension. And it has approximately 12 million installs, and we have improved multiple uh, bug fixes and even multiple enhancements. One of them are like improved IPv4 and IPv6 validation, and also improved schema definition and suggestions for the specific YAML files. So these are some of the improvements what we have done on the space of ID extensions, uh, both VS Code Java and Eclipse tooling. Uh, the idea is to make sure we do consistent releases based on the feedback coming from the upstream community and also based on the release of OpenShift uh, 4.30. So I have mentioned the specific link for the uh, marketplace, the GitHub repositories, and the change log with the specific releases. So feel free to look at it. And if you have specific feedback, do reach us out, and we will be happy to take care of the multiple feature requests and enhancements. So let's go to the another tool, what we have for developer experience around OpenShift that is known as Odo. Odo 3.9.0 is now available uh, for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and for Mac, it supports ARM architecture also. One of the important improvements what we have done for Odo right now is we now support Odo in a disconnected environment. So there was a feedback which came from the community that Odo should allow to debug or uh, deploy or create applications on top of OpenShift, which is running on a disconnected environment. So that workflow is now supported out of the box using Odo CLI. Uh, Odo in I right now integrates very seamlessly with the ID extensions. So ID extensions under the hood run Odo commands. And whatever workflow which is there on Odo 3.9.0 is uh, by default linked to the ID extensions. A uh, few features which we have improved in this release of Odo. Uh, so pod security admission support for the Kubernetes and OpenShift clusters. Uh, we have the demo video already uploaded on YouTube. Uh, feel free to have a look at it and uh, understand it more. We also now have support for auto build and deploy by default uh, dev file fields. So idea is to make sure that whatever new fields which are added uh, in your dev file configuration, the Odo should support it by default. And in this release, we wanted to make sure the auto build and deploy by default dev file fields should work out of the box. We have a dedicated demo for it on YouTube. So uh, feel free to work around it. One of the very important factors with respect to Odo right now is uh, if you want to work with any application which you want to deploy on top of OpenShift, Odo right now automatically analyzes what type of application it is. It automatically detects that application and recommends you the specific dev file needed for it. And it also recommends you the specific port which the application needs to run. So it basically improves the experience for developers who wants to deploy their application using the Odo CLI on top of a running OpenShift cluster. The other important improvement right now is for the previous releases, Odo support for Podman was in experimental mode. But with Odo 3.9.0, we have made sure that Odo on Podman is out of experimental mode, which basically means that any command which you want to run on Odo init, Odo dev, Odo debug, any specific Odo command which you want to deploy that application on top of Podman cluster will work seamlessly. This release has multiple bug fixes and multiple workflow improvements, and we are targeting to make sure that we keep on improving those support so that users who want to work with anything related to OpenShift application development, Odo should be the go-to tool for them. We have multiple blog posts, uh, which is available with respect to what features are added and with the specific releases, what new improvements are added. We have also added a quick start guide with respect to how you can work with any .NET application development, 
or a Node.js application development or a Java application development using Odo CLI. And on Red Hat Developer, we have a dedicated cheat sheet for Odo where you, we have mentioned that how specific commands of Odo such as Odo init or Odo dev or Odo debug will work uh, and how the functionalities are linked together for application development on OpenShift or any Kubernetes cluster running on hybrid cloud. If you want to reach out to the team, the team is present on the Kubernetes upstream Slack channel and the channel name is hash Odo. So reach out to the team for any feature request or any enhancements and we'll be really glad to make sure that we cater to the respects on priority. So this is what we have with respect to what's new for Odo on OpenShift 4.13 and whatever demo videos will be uploaded on YouTube. So feel free to look at it and provide your uh, valuable feedback. So that's it for my time and thank you for listening. Hi, my name's Brad. I'm the product manager of the Red Hat Developer Sandbox. And today I'm excited to give you an update on several of the things that we've been working on to make the Developer Sandbox the best experience for developers on OpenShift. First thing, I do want to say that we will be updating to 4.13 of OpenShift on the fast track schedule. Expect to see an announcement about that inside of the application. Now, speaking of inside of the application, let's talk about this new experience that we've been working on to help make developers as successful as possible. First up is the Help Center. This is the centerpiece of everything that we've been working on for the past couple of months to make developers as successful as possible. By bringing all of the content that Red Hat has been creating from learning to labs to activities right here inside of the application and a lot more. You'll notice several sections inside of the Help Center, which can be activated by a small blue question mark in the bottom right hand corner, no matter where you are in the sandbox. You'll notice how to's community, sharing your feedback and reporting a bug. So let's go through all of these right now and let's start with how to. The how to is a place where you can see all of the content that Red Hat has made to experience everything from just getting started to some of the most advanced concepts in OpenShift, such as how to implement natural language processing inside of OpenShift with Jupyter Notebooks. You can search to find what you're looking for and a guide will pop up to walk you through whatever that material may be and redirect you to the right location. In this case, it's gonna send you over to our activities where it's gonna show you how to use TensorFlow and Jupyter Notebooks um, and the developer sandbox to do some natural language processing. Next up is an example of one of those that is exporting your sandbox. This now enables you to take the applications you have and send them to another OpenShift cluster. Now, this is still very early on and requires some manual work, but this in-app guide will walk you through the entire process on how to take the completed export that's generated here and import it into another OpenShift cluster, such as Rosa. We're really excited to see where this goes forward. Now, as you're working on these different things, you might have some thoughts and they might have some problems. So now we have a way for you to report bugs inside of the application. Simply click report bug in the help center and a form is going to appear. From here, you can fill out a summary of what that bug might be. You can add your email address, which we need to use so we can contact you about the bug. And this is the email address you use to sign up with developer sandbox. Then add a description. This form will then now automatically create a JIRA ticket in our new public developer sandbox bug repository. Now I said public because we believe in collaboration and openness. And so this is a way for you as developers or anybody else to help collaborate with the developer sandbox team on addressing any of these bugs. Once you hit submit, you'll be taken to this page here. Simply click login using the same Red Hat login that you use for sandbox, you'll be sent to this form where you can add more information if you need or simply click create. You'll notice some information that's been added to the description. That is information that helps the team diagnose the problem and identify the specific account you're looking at. You can also click in and see the other bugs. You can leave comments and monitor the status. We'll do the best we can to address your bugs as quickly as possible. Now, you might have something that's not a bug. It might be an idea or a feature request. And that's where our new feedback experience comes in. Simply click on the question mark and click on share your feedback. From here, you can share any ideas that you have, feature requests or things you'd like to see better. More excitingly, we have an entire portal experience for this to create a collaborative environment for 
you. Here, you can submit any new ideas, but you can also see what others have submitted. You can go in, upvote them and downvote them to help us as a team know what matters. You can even leave comments for us and communicate back and forth. And you can see at the top of request status, we'll let you know whether or not we're going to build this, you put it on the roadmap, or something we're not going to do. Off to the side, you can see things we released and what's coming up on our roadmap. Because Red Hat is an open culture, and we believe that everything we do for Sandbox should be open and transparent in a collaborative way. And this new feedback experience, which will have more information soon, enables you and developers to do that. Anyone is welcome to share their feedback and see what's going on next. That about wraps it up for me. Thank you very much. Hi, all. Uh, my name is Stephen Lemer, and I will cover uh, our Maven Java tooling as well as Podman Desktop and OpenShift Local. So, for our Maven and Gradle uh, Java Java tooling, we have Gcube. Uh, Gcube version 1.12 is now available. One of the biggest features that we have been releasing is the ability to do remote development. Uh, so it is a new feature that allows you to run and debug your Java application from your local machine while connect to a Kubernetes uh, cluster. So it's it's essentially like placing your uh, your local developer machine inside your cluster. Um, so it's available in preview, and there is a demo that is available if you want to play around with the capabilities and see how it works, which is available uh, as well on the link in the slide. We also add the support for cron job controller uh, generation, as well as setting resource limits and init containers through XML and DSL configuration. There's a bunch of bug fixes and other improvements, and I invite you to read the blog post to learn more about the new capabilities that have been uh, added to, uh, to GQ. The Fabricate uh, Kubernetes client, the latest version available is the version 6.5. Um, the Kubernetes model types has been a, have been updated to uh, the version 1.26. We also added the support for uh, pod with ephemeral container operation as well as uh, Java types for customized uh, APIs. You can learn more about uh, the different new capabilities and bug fixed in this, uh, in this version uh, in the blog post link in the, in the slide as well. So Podman Desktop, Podman Desktop, uh, if uh, you are not uh, aware uh, about what it is yet, it is a desktop application that allows you to easily work with containers and, uh, and Kubernetes. It is even better when you are targeting to run those containers on OpenShift. Um, so it provides a bunch of capabilities to get Podman and Kubernetes OpenShift local getting installed and kept up to date. You can interact with containers. You can interact with pods. Uh, it has con um, it has capabilities also to handle VPN and proxy configuration, as well as managing the different image registries that uh, you, you, you may be uh, connected to. Um, and uh, it also provides an uh, air-gap installation for, uh, for some of uh, uh, our uh, users who might be interested by this uh, installation procedure. The latest key updates uh, is that we added the support for, uh, for, uh, for Docker compatibility mode. So that means that when you start Podman Desktop, uh, you have the compatibility mode with Docker, which is enabled out of the box. Uh, you can uh, then uh, use Podman as your default container engine, but all your different Docker com commands, as well as the different tools that communicate with Docker, will just um, uh, work with, uh, with Podman. You also have the ability to modify your containers. So that's the ability to choose certain containers that you want to uh, bundle together as a pod and to run together as a single unit uh, uh, as a pod. So you can do that from Podman Desktop. You have the ability to generate the Kubernetes 
YAMLs for containers and pod. And you also have the ability to directly deploy to a Kubernetes environment. So from Podman desktop, you have the ability to uh, choose your kube context to select uh, to select it from the tray menu of uh, of Podman desktop, and then inside of the UI, you will connect to that environment, and you will be able to do your di your deployment directly uh, from uh, from the UI. Um, so air gap installation has been added uh, as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier. And you also have the Compose installation, which is available directly uh, from uh, the GUI. So if you want to work with Compose, uh, Podman Desktop allows you to install Compose and to directly configure it to run with Podman as a container, uh, container engine. We recently added the, an extension for Kine, so you can install, create, and manage Kine cluster directly from Podman Desktop. Uh, and those Kine clusters are going to run in, uh, in Podman. And you can deploy to Kine and share images from Podman directly to Kine. So this is very convenient when you want to uh, work with the containers and test them in the context of, uh, of Kubernetes. And there's a bunch of bug fixes. I really invite you to, uh, to, to learn more about it on uh, the website, podman-desktop.io. There's release notes, and uh, there's all the different downloads that are available from, uh, from there. So OpenShift Local, previously known as code-ready containers. Um, so the version 2.17 that nine is now available. There's three different presets, so diff three different uh, environments that you can set up from your local uh, developer environment. Uh, you can either have a single node OpenShift cluster, and it will provide OpenShift 4.12.9, or you can also have uh, Podman, Podman 4.4.1. And uh, we recently introduced uh, MicroShift as an experiment uh, to provide you a lightweight uh, cluster that you can use to test uh, your, uh, your application onto uh, 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 an OpenShift environment, which will run locally. And with that, I am ending over to Rob. My name is Rob Gormley, and I am one of the product managers for Helm on OpenShift. As you know, Helm is one of the most popular package managers for Kubernetes, and we continue to integrate its capabilities across OpenShift. The goal is to provide an integrated developer experience that enables self-service communication, different services that would be consumed by the application developer, by also minimizing the need to interact with cluster operators and improving that entire developer workflow. OpenShift 4.13 is largely a maintenance release for Helm, upgrading from 3.10.1 to 3.11.1. In OpenShift 4.13, builds doesn't see a lot of visible changes, but under the hood, a lot of work has been done to improve the security, performance, and reliability of the product. We've been working ensuring that our package Jenkins image stays up to date with the latest security and bug fixes to help ensure that your Jenkins experience remains optimal while under the hood, we've been removing legacy artifacts, codes, and agents to both optimize this code base, as well as reduce the security footprint. You'll notice that we've removed code that supported Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, as well as a Maven and Node.js agents, which are no longer supported. Hi, everybody. My name is Serena Cakley, and I'm the product manager for OpenShift Developer Console, as well as uh, the backstage offerings in the future. So let's talk a little bit about the developer experience in OpenShift. As usual, we have a lot of improvements and enhancements to share with you today about what's coming in OpenShift 4.13. First, let's chat about console customization. We often hear from customers that they want to tailor the console experience for their developers. Over the past few releases, we've been enhancing that experience for cluster admins. In 4.13, we've added another customization capability through our form-based customization experience. Admins can now change the default pre-pinned navigation items in the developer perspective. This can be accomplished by going to the cluster settings in the administration navigation area, clicking on console configuration, 
then go to the customize um, action from the actions menu and go to the developer tab on that page to start customizing what resources you want your developers to be able to access most frequently from the developer perspective. Another area that we've added some enhancements is in uh, the Helm area. We've done a couple of things here. We've updated some Helm terminology. Instead of saying install and uninstall, uninstall Helm chart, we've now changed that to create and delete Helm releases because that's what you're actually creating. And we've also made some updates in the create, update, and deletion process. Those, those flows are now performed asynchronously, so you're not, make, you're not waiting for those to complete before you can go to, on to your next task. Another enhancement that we've looked at or have heard requested is for the ability to easily identify which pods are receiving traffic in the console. Developers and admins alike now have the easy ability to view whether or not a pod, a pod is receiving traffic. In the topology view on my lower left-hand um, screenshot, you can see the resources tab of topology now displays an icon indicating whether the associated pods are receiving traffic. And on the right screenshot, you can see that when you navigate to the pods list view, users are able to manage the default columns of their pods list view and display the receiving traffic column for easy access to that information. Now let's move on to the web terminal. As you know, when the web terminal operator is installed, users have the option to instantiate their own web terminal, getting access to easy, uh, easily issue CLIs from the console. Now when you invoke your web terminal, users have the option to customize their own version whether that be to customize the timeout period or even utilize their own image in that terminal, which could be able to extend the CLI capabilities from within that web, uh, web terminal instance. Moving on to serverless, when the OpenShift serverless operator is installed, workloads are, um, workloads are now have the ability, let's stop that. Moving on to serverless, when the OpenShift serverless operator is installed, developers now have the ability to create serverless functions. They can do that either from the create serverless function item on the ad page or through the import from Git flow. This now supports two different flows. You can either create serverless functions through builder images or through a Tekton pipeline if you happen to have OpenShift pipelines installed as well. Let's move on to OpenShift pipelines. When the OpenShift pipeline operator is installed, as you know, we have a great user experience around pipelines. We've enhanced this a little bit more in two major areas. One is when you do an import from Git. Um, Developers are able to configure their pipelines as code repo through that single process. So eliminating a two-step process and making it a single flow. So more efficient process in, is a result. Additionally, there's some improvements that have been made to the overall experience when dealing with pipeline runs, improvements to navigation, as well as exposing task run duration more consistently throughout the application. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Project Janus and Backstage. In October of last year, Red Hat joined the Backstage.io community, one of the leading open source IDP projects. Onboarding and developer productivity is a huge problem for our customers, and IDPs and Backstage can help solve these problems. So where's Red Hat investing? We're investing in the upstream Backstage community. We started by contributing a home chart to improve the initial installation experience of Backstage, but we're also contributing to Backstage Core. We're looking here to see how we can bring in dynamic plugins to the community and see if that will help solve one of the underlying problems that platform engineers have today with maintaining Backstage. We've also started a new open source community called Janus. This is our Red Hat sponsored community for building internal developer uh, portal alongside Backstage. Here we're curating best practices, custom actions, collaborating with customers on plugins, working on a more focused Helm chart for open shift installations, as well as providing some sample golden path templates that we know our customers and uh, upstream users are actually looking for. We've also created a showcase application, which I'll dive into in a bit.
Finally, we are working towards the product pro uh, supported products. What we'll use here in the coming months is about our um, productization efforts around a Red Hat build and distribution of Backstage Core, as well as a set of Red Hat supported plugins. But for now, if you're interested, please go to our showcase application or our Git repo and take a look at what we have available in our Janus showcase. I'm gonna do a quick little demo here. This is again showing you what Janus showcase application looks like a single pane of glass for a developer or any persona to see all the tools that they're utilizing and what they need to access. If they go into a catalog, they're able to see all of the services that are available. Here is gonna show the Backstage Showcase application that I'm working on right now. As a product manager, what I love about this is I'm able to quickly identify the issues that are associated with this application. I can also see what PRs have been merged. So if the developer tells me yesterday that something's been fixed and I come in today and I don't see it yet, I'm able to quickly see from inside the backstage showcase, from the inside backstage portal, if that PR has been merged or not. In addition to that, we've got some great plugins available already. We've got our topology plugin, which looks very similar to what we have in OpenShift developer perspective inside of the OpenShift console, except it's read-only. We have the ability to see um, workloads, how they're connected, as well as the detail, Kubernetes details, as well as associated resources that those workloads have. We also have a Quay plugin, which allows us to look at the images from that Quay repository and get some information of them, specifically the security scan. And you can even deep dive into that and see if there's vulnerabilities associated with those. And if so, you can take a look at those security advisories outside of the Backstage portal. But again, I'm able to access all of that from inside of Backstage, showing the great aggregation of data from within a single pane of glass. We've got some things like OpenShift learning paths. So if you have a developer who's learning OpenShift, instead of having to find where they can access those learning paths, we've pulled them right into the Jana Showcase application. We also have a multi-cluster uh, plugin, which works with open cluster management. So I'm sorry, the open cluster manager. So if you have clusters that are using the multi-cluster hub from there, you're able to drill into any of these clusters and kind of take a look and see what the status of them are. Oops, let me switch to another one. I can go into, let's see if I, this one will work. I can come into the status of the infra cluster and I'm able to see that the OpenShift version is 4.10.26, but there's an upgrade available. I can get access to my console URL. I can see how many cores, memory size, number of pods are available, et cetera. But this again provides a great way for developers or cluster admins in this case even, to get a nice view of everything from within a single pane of glass. And if they need to go do something outside, they've got a quick link for access to do so. Another thing I didn't mention was we also have uh, an Argo um, plugin. So we have the ability to inside of, let's see, my overview, I'm able to quickly get an overview of the Argo CD status, seeing that it's synced and healthy. Now I'm just gonna quickly jump over to the create page, which is where we have our golden path templates. Golden path templates are a way for platform engineers to provide self-service to their developers. In this case, we have a number of them for onboarding brand new applications. These this type of uh, golden path template can make savings from for your developers for something that used to take seven to 10 days to a minute or more. What one of these will do is it will allow you to, um, a developer to come in with some guardrails, provide some off options and information around what their GitHub organization is, what they want their project name to be called. Do they want to use, in this case, Tekton, or do they want to use um, GitHub Actions? And also, if they want to store their image in the OpenShift internal registry or on Quay. And once they're completed with this flow, what happens is the system will go create that GitHub repo, add some sample code, .NET code. It will add that CI, so the, Git, uh, the Tekton pipeline to it. It will build and deploy that, and then it will have that whole thing managed by Argo. So things are created, all your applications are created consistently, securely, and with guardrails for uh, a developer. So um, that's about what we have today for a early look at what we're doing with both with Backstage, Janus, and our productization 
um, futures. So keep your eyes on what we're doing in the Janus community, and we'll look forward to um, seeing you next quarter with more of updates. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. I guess now it's time to wrap this session up quickly. Um, I want to want to briefly dive into the additional resources available. Um, our upstream communities, as you know and love them, make sure to check in with janus-idp.io and podman-desktop.io in particular. Reach out to us. There's a chat. There is a PM mailing list that you can reach out to. Um, also, don't mm, forget to register for Red Hat Summit, May 23rd to 25th in Boston. There's a ton of sessions, hands-on labs, um, materials, stuff to learn. Um, so don't miss out on registering for that event. Um, if you haven't, sign up for the Red Hat Developer Sandbox because you get to play around with your own sandbox, play with containers, start exploring OpenShift. Um, that is definitely something. If you haven't done so, please make sure to register. Um, in general, just join the Red Hat Developers Program if you want to know more. And uh, I'll leave you with that. So thank you for your attention today and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye bye.